Shabbat shalom and Chag Sameach. As I speak, we're in the middle of the Pesach celebration, and we've already celebrated our two seders. So, what was it like for you? <laughs> Mine were uh, wonderful. And uh, as is always true uh, when I celebrate the seder, I have thoughts about uh, different aspects of it, and uh, the one that jumps out at me this year is the Dayenu. It's a fun song, right? Um, but it has, uh, as indeed all the different aspects of the Seder, a deeper and more serious aspect. Um, for one thing, just as the Seder ritual as a whole has 15 stages, so does Dayenu have 15 different stages. These are the stages of progress out of Egypt and towards the Promised Land. It's the process of liberation outlined in very traditional Jewish terms. And the number 15, being symbolic, uh, usually we write out the number 15 in Hebrew letters, Tet Vav, as in Tu Bishvat, the 15th day of the month of Shvat, um, or Tu Be'av, the 15th day of the month of Av. But you can also write 15 in Hebrew as Yud He, Yud being 10, He being 5, and Yud He being one of the many names of God in Hebrew. And so there is a sense here that the process of liberation is something that happens within the context of the divine name. In fact, we could say that when we liberate ourselves from whatever Egypt we happen to be dealing with at that time in our life, that we are manifesting the presence of God in the world and in our lives. So one aspect of the Dayenu. The other aspect is if you look at the different stages of liberation that are outlined there. Some of them are um, extremely uncomfortable, um, not necessarily uh, liberating in themselves at all. For example, when you have the uh, people arriving at the shore of the Red Sea, and it hasn't split yet, and we're supposed to say, you know, if you brought us this far to the shore of the Red Sea and it hadn't split, dayenu. But would that really have been enough for us? Because if the sea hadn't split, the Egyptian army would have caught up with us and dragged us back into slavery. So clearly, that stage of liberation by itself would not have been enough for us. The thing to keep in mind is that the process of liberation is just that, a process consisting of many individual stages, some of which are not going to be all that comfortable. So two lessons here. One is that we have to learn to be satisfied with whatever state of progress we find ourselves in at whatever stage of liberation we might be experiencing. Some of these stages might be uh, difficult. Uh, some of them might even represent backsliding in the direction of Egypt. Even so, um, we're supposed to be grateful and content that we got at least as far as we got. And so we can say, Dayenu, it would have been enough for us. But I also think we have to punctuate the world a little differently sometimes. Maybe we have to say, Dayenu? Is this really supposed to be enough for us? Because when we're at an incomplete level of liberation, we can't afford to be so content with it that we're afraid to move on. And so the message of the Dayenu is, yes, we're going to be uncomfortable from time to time, and that discomfort is actually valuable because hopefully... It will not paralyze us with fear, but rather propel us to take the next step of elevation in the process of reaching our personal promised land of fulfillment of our dreams. So the Dayenu, actually a very profound spiritual exercise, if one is willing to look at it seriously. There are many, many things about the Seder that are like that, and hopefully I'll have a chance to cover them when we arrive at this time of year uh, next time. So in the meantime, have a wonderful rest of Pesach, and I look forward to seeing you very, very soon. All the best, and Shabbat Shalom.